Hey, Steve Basic Argo Deck. Yeah, we are back here at our Vibe Studio. Yeah, we're still talking about that passive house. So, I think we're got the house pretty well completed. Um, what I want to talk about now is we actually have a detached garage. Now, so we might say, yeah, Steve, it's just a garage. I mean, we put a lot of effort. There's a lot of thought that went into this garage, but I think it just kind of completes that whole picture. Um, so let's talk. Yeah. If you remember, this is the passive house that I'm talking about. This is the one that we designed in 2009, built it in 2010, certified passive house. I think it was number five in the country, climate zone five. It's in a high wind area. And notice that there is no garage attached to that. The homeowner um, was very decisive and they wanted a dis, um, displaced or unattached garage. So I know it's somewhat uncommon to uh, our thinking today's, you know, some of the houses we're doing today, four or five car garages, um, lifts inside. Yeah, we're... Uh, we're having some fun. But anyways, no garage, but notice cedar siding, shakes up above, metal roof, white trim. You know, that was the aesthetic on the house. So when we look at the garage, why would that necessarily be anything different? You can see the house in the background and we have our nice driveway here and we actually did have a parking space there. Um, again, because it's on the water, there's no real context to the house. Like there's no sidewalk that has a walkway up to the front door. So, you know, the beauty of these somewhat ambiguous um, context is like I can park over there and go in this door or I can go around the nice walkway, take a little nature walk and come to the actual front door. But the garage, very similar to the house, cedar siding, cedar siding, white cedar shake, white cedar shake, white trim, metal roof, very, very similar, windows, window pattern, even the lights, all of that stuff match. A very, very nice cohesive unit when you uh, pull up here. On the other side, things of note, notice we actually do have a person door, so you can drive your car in, you can park it in here. And then you can walk out the door here, close the garage door behind you. And we had a nice little path to walk there. Also notice we have a little shed off the back, right? I mean, you're right on the water, kayaks, um, things like the lawnmower. There's a whole bunch of things that, uh, you know, you might want to consider. So on the back, again, we did these little porthole windows. Um, and in this case here, we used the, an Anderson window. We weren't striving for the same triple glazed efficiency that we were getting from the windows that we installed in the house. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, but yeah, the shed roof here, metal, our cedar lap siding, cedar shingle siding, and of course, all of the white trim. So, <coughs> excuse me. The floor plan to 80, 80 garage doors. Now, the homeowner here, even given that we were right on the water, he was uh, somewhat, I won't say somewhat, he was extremely modest about who he was. And, um, you know, he was certainly financially able to do a house literally five, six times the size of this one um, and put up a five car garage here, no problem. Maybe you could do it in a blink, um, but he chose not to. And even the doors, he didn't drive big cars. Um, you know, obviously he was one of the first passive houses in the nation. So that'll tell you a little something about his <coughs> drive. Um, eight O doors, just eight foot wide, not even nine foot wide. So we talked about the width, the size of the garage. <coughs> Um, basically an open format garage, which you would want, certainly no posts is my point. 
um, stairs up to a second level. There's that um, door out to the side there, the ability to park a couple cars in here. Still have a little bit of space up there. Notice we have some beams above. Notice that the beams are clear of the door, right? When you're putting beams in a garage, you want to make sure that the garage door can actually open <coughs> and uh, come into there. And then notice in back here, we have a nice big five foot opening that takes us to some storage. But we also have here, which is actually pretty interesting, cold storage pit. Yeah, we have a root cellar in here. Now, he had a, I don't know, we cleared probably about three acres of land for a two acre garden <coughs> that he had on the property and he was there every day it was you know his biggest hobby um he was uh he, he definitely to call him a gardener i think would be an understatement um but uh you know those are the plans of it there we have the three little porthole windows there um, nice window feeding some light on the side. Of course, we have glass in the, uh, the doors there. And uh, we'll take a quick peek at the elevations. So notice here, very similar to the house. We brought the lap siding up. I think it was to a point of about 10 feet. Um, given these are eight foot doors, notice, you know, and these are really good. I think this was uh, designer doors. So these were a real cedar wood door with real, you know, divided lights in a beautiful little trim package. But we stopped that lap siding and we had a little bit of space there um, of wall space before we actually started the roof. And then we have our white cedar shake there. One of the things about this was... I want to say this was limited to 17 feet. So some of you might say, well, why didn't you do a two-story garage or why didn't you just make that bigger, Steve? Um, the reality is, is we're limited to 17 feet. Now that might have changed. Um, I haven't done a detached garage um, in this area, but I know what the reason for it was is that <clears throat> in another video, when we look at the section, we'll talk about it a little bit more. They didn't want to create a habitable space up here. They didn't want that. The reason they didn't want that is this is down on the Cape and you would get people putting in a garage, putting that space up there and then renting it out to people. And so all of these properties would basically have all of these rental units on it. Um, I'm guessing it's probably somewhat changed since 2010, 14 years ago down there. But uh, that was their reasoning for it. Um, down the left side, you can see we got a little bit of shingle there and then a whole lot of lap siding there where our window is fully um, engrossed in that. We have a five quarter head casing, a simple one by four, and then our typical historic sill there, casements with the grills. <coughs> There, um, on the other side, like I talked about, we had the person door there, and then we have our nice little band, cedar, cedar shingles, but then we have that little workshop um, storage space off the back. And remember, that one has that cold storage unit there, and it actually had a lid that was on a pulley system, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. A little later but um, yeah that is the garage so simple little garage certainly uh, complements the house extremely well developing a little bit of you know kind of a, a very cohesive feel there to hang out have that garage and actually the garage you know when you when you see there's the water here, the house was here on the roof plan. The garage was actually here, there's a little shed bump out and that's a straight gable. So the driveway, you know, did that. 
The beauty of that too is, you know, creates a nice little compound here. You know, we have that big deck and patio and fire pit, but nice little yard for kids to play and stuff. This is a second home down on the Cape. It's not their primary um, residence. So it's a place that they go to to relax, have fun, play games with the kids, canoe, kayak, all of that. You know, there's a, a little trail. There's, you know, the water's actually there. There's a bunch of nice plantings and stuff we did, but we made sure we had a nice trail here so we can get those kayaks in the water there um, and canoes and stuff and uh, get out. The ocean is, you know, it's probably maybe a half mile, three quarters of a mile paddle into literally the open Atlantic Ocean there. So anyways, <clears throat> you know, great little project. Um, you know, you, you guys have probably heard me say it before. I absolutely love what I do. I don't think there's uh, many architects out there that love um, what I do or what we do as much as I love it. Um, I, I, and I'm truly blessed. Uh, one of my daughters and my son have followed in my footsteps and my, my son recently graduated. So he's going to be joining us. So it's uh, every day, not only do I get to do what I absolutely love, I get to do it with some of the people that I love the most. So it's, uh, it's truly, truly a treat. And, you know, most of my friends revolve around the building industry. Um, I travel around the country speaking at conferences, so I get to catch up. This past week, I was just at one. I actually got to see a few people that I haven't seen in about six or eight months. So it was nice. You got to dinner, all that good stuff. Anyways, I do not want to bore you, but I do love what I do. Um, yes. And you know it. I'm Steve Basic Architect. Yeah, this is the Vibe Board. If you're looking for more, buildshownetwork.com. I'm one of the contributors there. I got literally hundreds of videos up there to all different aspects of construction. Go check it out. Um, and if you haven't heard, November 7th or 9th, what are we? Uh, June, July, August, September, October, November. We're six months out from Build Show Live. Yeah. All the Build Show contributors are going to be out there in one place doing presentations. We're going to have an exhibit hall, all of our favorite products that we talk about. You're going to be able to go out there, meet those people, see those people out there. It's in Austin, Texas, so plan accordingly. November 7th through the 9th. If you're still looking for more, you know it. Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, and of course... You're right here on YouTube. First of all, thank you for joining in. Um, this is always a discussion. Drop your comments down below if you got questions. Sometimes it might take me two or three days to get there, but I do try and go back in time and see where I haven't answered and try to complete that discussion. So please don't get discouraged. I'm trying. I'm just a very, very busy guy trying to do an awful lot and share my information with you. So you found me on YouTube. If you are a subscriber, thank you. If you're not, smash that subscribe button. Yeah, smash it. Tell all your friends. Until next time, I'm Steve Basic Architect. Long live our buildings.